Hello, I'm here with Jackie Devereaux and she's going to tell us a bit about what she's been up to over the lockdown and the past 12 months and then share with us some of the ideas behind the four pieces she's got in the Centenary Unlocked show. Hello Jackie. So are the montages always created with damp paper that's rolled and there's no glue? No glue. No, wow, that's, no. that's incredible. I just, when I saw them, I suppose I just automatically assumed they were glued, but no, that explains no. they're so clean and, and pristine yeah. around the edges because there's no glue on them at all. Well, I, I carefully hide um, a bit of stitching within the rebate of the frame. Mm -hmm. If I, if I um, put something, uh, I haven't got, I haven't, I've got one here. No, I haven't got one down here, but um, the, the little bit that's hidden in the frame has got a line of stitch uh, on the sewing machine. Yeah. So that's away, so you can't see that. And then there might be another little bit of stitch on another part of it. And then it's going to be the rebate and the backing that will will hold it together. I've covered the, um, the rolled, the beauty of the rolled element when I was working in outside in France and uh, and I just, I just saw the beautiful um, shadows that they created and this this amazing sort of uh, strength in the paper just by tearing it and then it automatically rolled up and, uh, and I thought oh, that's rather nice I'll tear another bit and see what that does and and over the years I've just just now create things with that in mind it's, oh yeah with all the flowers and the colors and and that's 70 centimeters long yeah, by 25 and these bits here i mean they're all they're all loose but they're not going to go anywhere once it's in the frame the frame just holds it so, but sometimes, you know, it holds it and not quite right. So that's where I start having to jiggle around. But, um, and that one is, that's stitched down there. You won't want on one side, you won't see that. Just a, a row of white stitching. And that's all it needs really. And uh, um, I haven't stitched this one, but it will, it will go, uh, go be stitched back up. So I, I purposely sort of cover areas as well. So I'll pull that, pull that back and you can see. I, I tear it and then when I want to roll it, I damp it on the back. And then I use a, a piece of tubular steel, like um, um, a curtain rail, a piece right. of curtain rail, and then roll it up and then hold it and sometimes I'll use something like this, which weighs a ton, just to lean on it until it's dry. And it dries really quickly. So just, it only takes like, I don't know, minutes really, 20 minutes. And, and then I can take the weight off, slide the pole out and it's solid. But the beauty of that is I can unravel it sometimes and, and sort of replace it or turn it slightly and pull it. So there's a lot of, um, it's not only paper tearing, but it's paper manipulation. And no, you don't want that. I think so it needs- There's a Constantina one in the bank side in the glass cabinet um, was there. Was yeah, there. yeah, yeah. And I had one of my big, um, uh, just an ink, uh, St Paul's and the South Bank, from the South Bank. Um, and the whole of the, like, the city buildings and they all pop up in, in between these, these folds. And uh, so it's all the time I'm, lo I'm looking for a way to present something that's that unique to me. That's, you know, I don't need to sign it in a way if people recognize what I'm doing. What you love about it is that it's, the subject matter is unashamedly traditional watercolor and ink subject matter. So you've got beautiful landscapes, cityscapes, flowers, nature, and then there's this really contemporary manipulation of the white space in the paper mm -hmm. that's going on around it. And I think that's really exciting. And so often people think of watercolors and they think they can be a bit 
old fashioned and say oh, well, it's, it's wonderful when you see this really yeah. up to date contemporary approach to watercolour painting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I, I came up against this when we were living in France because watercolour is not really their tradition. And being an English woman and and then gradually going grey and um, and if if I put a poster out, you know, exhibition of um, Jackie Devereux's latest watercolours, I'd only get a handful of French people come along to see because they would imagine wrongly that it was just pretty little, you know, dainty things. So and it was an Australian artist friend of mine who came to a show I was having in Wogan Abbey one year and. Um, and he said, Jackie, how's it going in, in France? And I said, oh, it's fine, it's good, you know, I love it and all the rest. But I can't seem to make a breakthrough there because the, you know, it's watercolour. So he said, well, you need to call it something different. So he, he said, I'll think about it. Wandered off, came back an hour later and said, right, I think your next uh, advertising should say Jackie Devereux's new work, contemporary works on paper. And when I did that, it changed everything. <laughs> um, and so one, one of your watercolour works or your contemporary works on paper <laughs> um, is The Broken Bowl and Their Friends. And yeah. I mean, what, what was the story behind that piece? Right. <laughs> Here's the bowl. Oh. And... It's all in bits, it's all the bits in there. It was it broken one... on purpose or, or no, for, it for it the purpose not. of art or was it incidental the bowl had broken? It was, it, it was incidental, it wasn't, it was pure accident. I've got a, a little series and I bought them in France from a Japanese ceramist mm -hmm. and it's got just beautiful decoration on. And um, they're all different shapes and, and I just love them. And I started getting a bit crazy about bowls uh, a few years back. And, um, you know, because there's, there's such a basic thing, you know, when, when, when people started firing clay and all these beautiful shapes. And, and I thought, so I stopped it going in the bin and I thought, no, we're going to keep that. And um, so that's where that came from. And I've just turned it into, made it into my own thing on the painting and, um, uh, and just incorporated lots of different things. But I, my next one with this bowl is going to be cherries pouring out of it. So I'm, already, I'm waiting for the cherry season to get them um, to come out. So I won't, oh, well, I have got that one here. It's not even spring yet. So that's, that's that one. And when I'm working on, on one of these um, compositions, I'm, my starting point is just to pile on lots of color. Um, very basic colours, you know, the, the red, yellow and blue and, uh, and whatever mixes they make. And then I start pulling out shapes from it. I start creating, oh, where does my first bowl want to be? How does that shape work? And I do a lot of withdrawal techniques. So I'll paint, the, the paper's covered in paint and then I just um, withdraw the paint. I remove it with magic sponge and acetate. So I have, um, quite a collection of different shapes that I've created myself. And, uh, and by taking it off and then waiting for it to dry, putting on another shape, it, you end up with a, a kind of a cacophony of, of shapes. Can you see that? Oh, I can see that, yeah. And I can unravel it. So that's the print. And that was a trial, a trial run for the one that I've got. On, on exhibition and I just started playing with with how how can I get that to be freestanding and shall I add anything to it or what shall I do with shall I tear this bit off and make a handle out of it and um say so, because I've got a few of these I thought oh I can I can play with that to my heart's content and when you first do it, you could still unravel it and look at what's inside, but yeah. the longer yeah. it's kept in that container, the more it becomes like a secret, doesn't it? Because you won't be able yes. to see the inside of the image. No, no. And that one, um, because of all the curls on, on the bottom, I, I had to work, I've got a, a prototype, which I'm looking at. It's, it's 
quite ugly actually, but it's up on the shelf. But I had to work out how do I get the drawing to show precisely where I want it to show when I've rolled it. And, and I had to work on it flat and then roll up the bits individually. So that was really fiddly. <laughs> it takes a lot of, um, of, of like my brain to make it work both around that way and around that way. And, and then the name, the, the frills and spills, I thought was, was quite fun to, to add to the story. But it's a good test for something for me to want to put it out in public is, is if I can still sit and look at it, you know, week after week uh, and still enjoy it um, for what it is, then I think, oh, maybe it'll give someone else some pleasure. And, uh, and it's, I like watching people looking and trying to work out how it's done as well. I get a lot, I get a big kick out of that. I wanted to make it more dynamic than just Lily's. And, um, but I, I knew I was going to have to cover up certain parts of the painting. So there's, you know, if you took the bits off, you'd see a lot more of the lilies as well. But that's part of the, the idea that, you know, they are hiding there. And, um, and then I wanted to show the stems as well. So I manipulated that as well. It takes ages. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It, it looks, um, you make it look very spontaneous, but it's, it's clearly a very meticulous um, thinking process to get all the white space where you want it. Yeah, it is. And, and the last one, the one with um, the fragments, the bits of um, rolled paper, they, they, were, they weren't just fragments, they were pieces I, I did actually create. Um, so, uh, if, you, if I flattened it all out, there would be a picture in there, but, but I've rolled them up to such an extent. And then what I did was I just took a big sheet of paper and just threw them down. Explaining more about the process and a bit about the works and what Welcome. you've been up to, that's been really, really great to hear about.